Hey, welcome back to Kitchen All Over the World, the show where I cook things that I've never tasted before. On today's episode, I'm going to try to make polvo guisado from Cabo Verde. Join me. What we got here is some polvo, some octopus, a little Sleeping Beauty. And before we can cook it, we need to clean it a little bit. I bought it from the store, so the ink sac is already, you know, and the brains and everything are already cut out, but they were nice, I guess, and left me with the eyeballs to cut out myself. So you have to go ahead and cut around them. So that's interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a new experience for me. And there are your octopus eyeballs in there somewhere. Uh, and then the next thing we want to do is take out the beak, which you can see right there. So you want to take your sharp knife, careful that your fingers are not on the other side of it, and cut around. And there we go. And there's the beak. So now that the octopus is clean, we're going to go ahead and boil it. And something that we want to do first, in order to make it look nice and pretty, is we're going to go ahead and dunk the tentacles in first. And they're going to curl up nicely. See that? Isn't that pretty? Woo! And I only got four tentacles. What a ripoff. Okay, now we're gonna drop that guy in and let it go for an hour. And I guess contrary to other meats, is the way to get octopus tender is you cook it longer. So an hour is gonna be adequate time, hopefully. So let's go, see you in an hour. So it's been about an hour and there's our beautiful little octopus. And it is, you can see how tender it is. It's just flopping all over the place, which is awesome. And a testament to the long cook method. So I'm gonna take them out, throw them in a bowl, let them cool down a little bit before I cut them up. And I'm also gonna reserve a little bit of this beautiful purple broth. All right, so I got my mise en place, as it were. Everything in its place, as they say. I'm gonna throw a little bit of olive oil into a pan. Make sure it doesn't smoke like this. That's a really bad idea. If it gets too hot and it starts smoking like that, olive oil will get bitter. You don't want that. So long story short, don't do that. Uh, we're gonna throw in some sliced up onions. As well as some sliced up garlic. And stir it around, you know the deal. Get it nice and uh, translucent. Oh yeah, look at that. Don't make it brown like that. All right, now we'll add in some sliced up green pepper. We're using poblano in this case, or I am at least, because you know what? I'm done with bell peppers. They bring nothing to the table. And again, we're just trying to soften these up a little bit. All right, our peppers are nice and soft. So at this point, I'm gonna throw in our octopus, which I cut up into bite-sized morsels. I'm gonna throw that at the bottom of the pan just for a few seconds. Love those colors, purple and green. Complimentary? I believe so. Next up, I've got a habanero chili that I sliced up into little pieces so it can integrate nicely. I'm gonna throw that in. I bought two, but I didn't want my butthole to burn tomorrow, so. And on top of that, I've got a, a tomato that I've diced up. You can also use tomato paste if you want. Instead, I pulled out all the seeds so that it doesn't add too much extra moisture. I'm also gonna throw in a little bit of white wine. About a half a cup. And of course, if you can't use wine in your recipes, then uh, you know, go ahead and don't use wine. Maybe uh, throw in a little bit of vinegar, like a tablespoon, if that, just to bring out that little bit of acidity that wine lends to, uh, to these dishes. Now this can be called either manioc or cassava or yuca. 
Uh, basically, it's a starchy tuber that can be used for a number of different purposes. I think the tapioca is made by pounding out the starch that comes from this, as well as you can fry it up. They use it in Mexican cuisine as sort of like a French fry uh, alternative. You can boil it. Basically, think of it as a, a potato. The only difference is you want to really peel the skin off and wash your hands afterwards and cook it well because the skin is poisonous and has cyanide in it, and as does the plant, but as long as you cook it, it's fine. So we're gonna throw, <laughs> it's just, it's fine, it's fine. We're gonna throw it in and fully submerge it so that it can sort of boil. I'm gonna cover it up for, let's give it about 15 minutes and see where the yucca is at. Um, that's really gonna be our indicator for when this is done. Octopus, get some pepper. I'm gonna get everything on one bite just so I can like see what it's all about. The two main players in this situation you'd think would be the wine, you'd think would be tomato or pepper maybe. No, no, it's it's yucca and it's octopus. That's what I'm tasting right now. It definitely smells nice. And it tastes delicious. It's definitely like a fresh sort of braised stew kind of thing. Cilantro pairs well with it, but I was hoping for like, you know, sometimes you get these like, you get this nice pairing of seafood and white wine that really just pops. Um, think about mouflites in Belgian cooking mussels that have been steamed in white wine sauce. It just kicks it up a little bit, it gives some acidity to it. Uh, this doesn't really have that. If I were going to go through the process of boiling octopus to make it nice and tender, I think I would probably just follow it up with a sear, like a nice grill. And this is not meant as an offense to the culture of uh, the cuisine of Cabo Verde. Not at all. I mean, this is delicious, absolutely. And I, if I were in Cabo Verde right now, I would go to a restaurant that served this and order this dish. But I was expecting something different. 